Take me home, I wanna know If you're down, ready to go Wanna fly away with you Float away, fly away Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Road Show. I'm your host, Jacob Rhodes. Why am I talking like this is a fucking show? This is just a podcast. What's going on? I'm sitting here with Brandon Willington. Howdy doody. How are you, brother? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? <laughs> I'm very well, I'm very well. I, I asked that like we have been chatting for the last half hour. <laughs> yeah, no shit, no shit. <laughs> but like, come on, I guess like people want to know how you are. Yeah, are, you, are, they, are we about to talk to a happy dude? Yes, we are. Yeah, I, I had think. the day off today, so, so that was pretty sweet actually. Nice, what'd you get up to? Uh, what did I do in the morning? I just had like training and then I had a massage, an infrared sauna and then mm. I had a fucking nap. And I just- Dude, that is a fucking productive day for a day off. <laughs> yeah, well, I hadn't like had a proper like scheduled day off in like quite a while and yeah. I was like, oh, I was probably overdue. <laughs> yeah. Do you fuck with floating? Oh, like, oh yeah, dude. Um, Probably about this time last year, I was like super into float tanks. Yeah. Every Friday and with like an hour sauna and then like a 90 minute float tank. That's good. Yeah. Because you're sweating out like all the bad stuff first. Uh, yeah. And then exactly. putting good in like well, what magnesium. I was trying to, do, I, was trying to I was trying to like go sober for like three months. I think I did like two weeks. I, no, I didn't. <laughs> I did like two months in a week or something like that. <laughs> Um, and so it was part of a strategy to like mellow myself out so much that I'd get home, hit the bed and just fall asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It worked for a, a long enough anyway. Are you, um? because you said just like just before you were like, you, you spent a lot of money on trying to get to sleep. Yeah, uh, well, like trying to get better quality sleep. Better quality yeah. sleep. Like, um, well, that's important because you spend like a third of your sleep, or, like a third of your life asleep. And everyone always tries to pick it like, What's the best biohack and like all oh, this, that, and the other? I'm like, man, if you just like, it's like sleep, diet, and exercise, you just get those right, you'll be sweet. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I got like double glazed windows because I live in the city and I'm on the first floor. So, like, there's some like traffic noise sometimes. Yeah, good. Um, move. I got blackout curtains. So, like, if those are down, like, the only light source is like my tiny little like clock light, which is really dim. Love that. Um, weighted blankets. Uh, dude, what? you've gone all out, bro. Yeah. I, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, man, I, dude, I like, <laughs> I will not like, my girlfriend's like, when are you going to like come sleep in my I'm like, you do not have the level of like yeah, oh. <laughs> sleep technology investment that I have. <laughs> dude, I go like, okay, so I don't work, I don't wake up to an alarm. All the lights in my room, so I have like lights under my bed, they just turn on red and I will just come like slowly awake. Within like five or ten minutes, like what? like no, wah, 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 none of that shit. No cortisol spike in the morning. The lights just turn on red, which is a really low. Like what is it, light wave, whatever it is. Yeah, okay. Best light to wake up to. Does oh, slowly come to. So um, what is it set to like a timer or something? Yeah, so like six thirty a.m. Like it's my Google what? Assistant. Everything Dude, just turns on. That's a fucking game changer, bro. Yeah, I had like what else have I done? <laughs> had an air purifier. Um, when I say had, I mean the. I haven't like bought any filter and things like that. I just haven't fucking bothered buying any filter, so I can't use it. What else have I got? Uh, oh, I got an aura ring, which I don't have on me. Um, and that's like for your heart rate and everything. Yeah, right? like sleep tracking, uh, all that stuff. So like heart rate variability. Yeah, heart rate variability. It sounds like you know what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll track all that stuff. I only wear it during sleep, though. Even though you can use it to track activity, I just wear it for sleep. What um, is it like for sleep? Oh, uh, like the ring. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll track your sleep, like with your sleep cycles, your respiratory rate. Um, it will give you a sleep score, oh, which is so it lets you know if you've got like sleep apnea and stuff. Uh, I don't know about sleep apnea. Um, I know the sleep cycle app, I think can do that. Yeah, okay. Um, which I used to use until I kind of got this thing. Um, I also used to snore a lot and it would like record you and I'd be like, oh, that sounds funny. Uh, nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> But just yeah. like dying. Yeah, just like, <laughs> just like shit like that. You like listen to something. Oh fuck, dude. Apparent like apparently back in the day when I was like heavy, heavy smoking, mm-hmm. I would snore like you'd have to nudge me because like mm-hmm. dude's about to pass out. Like, yeah, I, I used to like snore a lot. Like my like ex girlfriend, like the girlfriend of the time, um, like was like you snore really, really badly, and that's when I got the sleep cycle thing. I'm like Jesus Christ! Like, it's literally like two hours of snoring time. Oh damn! Um, and then I started exercising, and then it just like fucking plummeted. It was, it was like, yeah. like as soon as I started like just doing any level of exercise, 
out. Your heart's out. actually working. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> oh, you're actually like doing shit now. I don't really know how it fixes the snoring, but it fucking did. So yeah, well, <laughs> just don't stop. There was um, a statistic that I read that cardio, just like general cardio, 45 minutes, five times a week. Mm -hmm. Like just like, it doesn't need to be fucking hectic. Mm -hmm. Just like solid state cardio. Just like, yeah. I mean, set, yeah, yeah. steady state. Yeah. We've been talking about the studio. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like there's a seven fold drop in all cause uh, mortality. Yeah, I think I know the, the study you're talking about. Do you do you listen to Huberman Labs podcast yeah, as well? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, fuck, I do. You. yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. yeah so, bro, I can like remember his like sponsorship message off the top of my head. <laughs> it's like his voice is so soothing. It's I wanted soothing. to make a minute. It's like my name's Andrew Huberman. I'm, Andrew a, I'm, Huberman. A, I'm a professor of neurobiology. But dude, what a man, right? Oh yeah, he's fucking what sick. What a fucking man. That, yeah. guy, uh, that guy actually like um, through uh, the Joe Rogan experience, uh -huh. I heard his podcast that he yeah. did with Joe yeah. and then I heard like his own podcast. But the one thing that I really took away from it and when I don't take it, I notice is mm. Tongat Ali. Oh, bro, I'm taking that right now. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm out of it right now and uh -huh. I do not feel myself. Yeah, me and my PT are like both big Huberman Lab podcast fanboys. I like told him about it. I'm like, dude, you had to listen to this fucking thing. He eventually listened to me like weeks later and now it's all that he talks about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like got like he called on. He called yeah, on. yeah, because like me and my like uh, PT were like in a cut at the same time, so we're taking all the same supplements and yeah, like Tonkat and uh, what uh, Fedosia, Agrestus. Yep, yeah, yeah, the fat burner I was taking. Mm -hmm. um, I think w the one we're watering now is like stuck in the US or something like that, but. Mm. Yeah, the, the, like it's on backwater or something. Oh, okay. Everyone, right. like, fucking human says something, it's gospel, it's, and everyone tries to order it at the same yes, time. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> because he was dropping bombs on that yeah, fucking podcast. Was like, what the fuck? <laughs> dude, dude. Yeah. yeah, when he came out of the gutter, like, it was just like, man, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure it was David Sinclair that, uh -huh. yep. that put Joe onto him. Yeah, I think so. And David Sinclair is the sleep guy. Is n no, David Sin Sinclair is the guy mm. um, for uh, longer age. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, I, I'm I'm recalling. I'm they, Your, they did Matthew it. Walker. Yep, that's is the sleep of, guy. Yeah, yeah, I got them messed up. Um, yeah, but David Sinclair is like he's trying to figure out how to like reverse like mm. blindness by yep. I think putting protein into bacteria or like changing the certain DNA or RNA capacity in a bacteria and then injecting that into the iris. Mm -hmm. uh, what the fuck, yeah. bro? <laughs> it's, it's, it's wild how like, so, far, like science has gone. I know, man. And it's only going to get crazier, mm, you know? Yeah. Um, but fuck, bro, you're like, you're going down a fucking crazy path too with what you're doing. Which which aspect? <laughs> exactly, all of it. <laughs> all of it, bro. No, you're like creativity with marketing and stuff. Oh, yeah. The, <laughs> we were talking about the ads before. Yes. Yeah. Dude, where, where did you come up with that premise just to be real <laughs> as fuck? <laughs> um, well, like, okay, so for, I suppose for context of anyone that's watching or listening. Yes. Um, so I run an advertising agency called Where You. We do like Facebook and Instagram and Google ads and TikTok ads and all that stuff to help business owners like grow their business online. And... Um, uh, these ads that like advertise, so you get a free lead magnet, like it's just a free course. I'll show you a bunch of stuff that you'll be able to benefit from. And then some people on the second page will watch the video where I go, look, if you like this, you can book a sales call with me. I'm going to try and convince you to pay us to do it for you. <laughs> um, but everything's like totally up front. And it's, it comes from a place, like, and the ad itself, like I swear, I'm like, I'm like, I, I'll like, I'll like roast people in the comments and shit. Like it's a hundred percent transparent. Like bro, like whenever I get like, whenever so I look for me in comments now, I'm like, this is the next one. Yeah. Like, Yes, this, yes. Guy, <laughs> this guy's gonna fucking body to like tens yeah. of thousands of people are gonna watch it on Facebook. Yes. Um, and it comes from a place of so like our top one of our top values anyway is like radical transparency, which yeah. is like we're always hundred percent upfront with our clients. If something's wrong, they're gonna know it before they even we're gonna tell them before they even know it. Um, and that goes into like our marketing and our sales and things like that as well. So it's like hundred percent transparent. Um, and because also in the like marketing guru world, which you could argue that I get put into that box because I'm the one in the Instagram ad. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's filled with like people selling like bullshit courses that are like overpriced. There's a lot of like cliches and stuff like that. And they over promise and under, -deliver, under deliver and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of address all of that in the ad and go, look, I know you're thinking this, 
this is what it is instead. You think it's free and it's dodgy? I'm like, you 100% get this for free. If you want like, to pay us to do it for you, you can have that conversation. You're a grown up. You can make your own decisions. <laughs> like, do whatever you want, bro. Yeah. Um, and every single person that I've done a sales call with, and there's literally hundreds now, yeah. every single, like, at least nearly every single one has brought up that they really appreciated that like transparency and stuff like that. Of course. Even to the point where recently I changed the video on the second page where it tells in the book of call. Typically it's considered good practice to essentially hide price until after a sales conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, Fuck it. Let's just tell them the price. And so <laughs> I was like, I was like, that's not transparent. Let's be more transparent. Yeah, let's like, just tell them before they're asking. Let's go like, how much further can we go with this thing? And so the video starts, it goes, look, you're going to get all this stuff in an email in like five minutes. Don't worry about it. But um, if you like can't be fucked doing it yourself or you don't want to figure it out for yourself or you like don't have the time, whatever, um, you can book a call with me. I'm going to tell you the prices right now and you can decide for yourself if you can afford this conversation or, yeah. or the outcome of this conversation. Or, and the first slide is what everything costs. It's like the best infomercial in the world. <laughs> it's like they cut all the bullshit yeah. out of it and you're just like, I, I, look, don't waste my fucking time. Yeah. I'm not going to waste yours. Yeah. and that's, it, it was also like, okay, so that's the unselfish reason. The selfish reason too is I just want to talk to people that I know can afford it. I don't of want to course. spend like 30 minutes talking to someone and then they're going to go think about it or talk to their accountant. I'm like, bro, if you had to think about it, like, that means there's a question you have I haven't you haven't asked yet that I haven't answered yet. It's the price, or you're too polite to tell me to fuck off. Yeah. Just tell me which one it is, bro. I was like, if you have all the information that you need, we can probably come to a decision right now, or else let's just not do it. Mm. <laughs> well, you're obviously doing well from it, bro. <laughs> obviously, like that upfront nature. I think like I get told a lot as well with this podcast, they love how raw it is. Mm. Right? People love how raw it is. Yeah. But it's just because I'm myself. Yeah. And I think that's exactly what you're doing with your advertisement. Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's, it, and I don't have to think about the marketing either. Like I'll just sit down in front of the camera, bang one out, cut out the silent gaps, and that's the ad. <laughs> so I don't even put any thought into it and things Dude, like that. That is awesome. Um, but yeah, god damn. So um, like uh, when I first met you it was a couple years back, oh, like two years ago. Yeah, and I don't think you had the marketing agency at that point. No, I was just freelancing at that point. Yeah, that's right. You were just freelancing. Mm -hmm. um, how long did you do? You said four years. Yeah, I mean, I suppose you could argue that I got into like online advertising and that kind of umbrella of broad subjects in like two thousand mid two thousand seventeen. Okay, um, and then. Yeah, then like you start with like organic traffic and then you start dabbling like paid traffic and then like website building and stuff like that. Um, and then so I started freelancing in like, I don't know, 2018 or something like that. And then I was doing a lot of the ads for like most of the events and nightclubs and or some of the events and nightclubs in Perth. Um, and then <clears throat> yeah, like 2019, I managed like half a million dollars in ad spend just for like nightclubs, festivals, events, stuff Holy like that. Holy shit. It was like literally all I did and I could like bang them out hell quickly. Like it was just, I could do them in my fucking sleep basically. They're all essentially the same. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, the process is anyway. Um, like the targeting and everything. Yeah, yeah. And how you like structure campaigns, what the ads should say, things like that. Um, and so that was, that was all very like second nature. And then uh, like I hired one, one guy, Nick, when I was like super, super busy and he would do like the Google ad stuff. And then we hired Joseph who was our, like well, my second hire. And I'm like, it's kind of weird that like, I have a team and when people ask them where they work, they had to say Brandon and Willington because that's like, that's what the brand was. <laughs> um, and so I was like, that's weird. Let's come up with a name. And it was, okay. So the re <laughs> the company is called, well, the company is called Brandon Willington PTY LTD. The brand itself is called Where You, spelt like where and then the letter U, spelt like a drunk message. Um, and I'll tell you the story behind it. <laughs> because, you know, I have like a billion fucking sensational company ideas, right? Dude, um, like it is... Awesome. Like, it's like <laughs> I've seen those um, adverts of yours. I think I'm retargeted, bro. Oh, yeah. Uh, really awesome. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, where you actually used where you, the message thing in an advert, where it was like where you, and then the next message popped up. Kind oh, yeah. yeah, of, yeah. I, it, I think it ended on where you, uh -huh. but it was, yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. But, well, the reason I had the, because <laughs> originally where you was meant to be something else. Okay. Here and we I go. had this fucking brilliant idea for an app where I was like, me and my mate Bell, um, I was about to say Bell ended, then I realized no one would know who that is, but you can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's his nickname. <laughs> anyway, I was like, man, how good would it be if there was an app that like, because we would like always message each other where you when we're like drunk in a night out. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. how about we cut out this message in the thing and we make this fucking app where you ping your friends and then you can have like sharing permissions and you can see what nightclubs all your friends are at. Ooh. And then I was like, fuck it, we'll call it where you. That's hilarious. That's then, awesome. Um, 
Anyway, so I was like, I was like, I bought the domain name. I got the logo done on yeah. Fiverr for like twenty bucks. I had the Facebook page claimed already, and then when it, we obviously didn't do it because it's not that great an idea. Um, but anyway, and then um, we. It's not bad an idea. It's not a bad idea, but it's we just didn't bad. do it. But like yeah. anyway, and then um, yeah, we needed a name for the agency. I'm like, well, let's pick one of the fucking 50 domain names that I own and just use one of those. And so we just picked that. And it kind of made sense because it was like, where we find where your next customer is. Yeah. So like, fuck it, let's just let's do that. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah. That, I love when, like, because that's pretty much what happened with Creation Studio. Uh-huh. It started as Creation Kombucha. Uh-huh. And then, okay. yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, and then I um I stopped that like when COVID happened, and then moved it into music. Yep. Yeah. So like, did you study marketing? Uh, no, I, I dropped out of uni. Um, I don't want to make this sound like one of those super cliche. You had to drop out of uni to like start a thing. It was just because I wasn't. <laughs> but you do. Student. Yeah. <laughs> like no, well, I was just okay. So I did. I was doing a double degree in information systems and technology, and right. then I was doing. And then I was like, I didn't like the technology bit, so I was doing information systems. And then that was around when I started working in nightclubs. I'm like, man, vodka's pretty cool. So I started doing event management instead. And then um, <laughs> and then I was like, this isn't, we're not, we haven't been talking nearly enough about vodka as I'd like to be. So I dropped it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shit. I dropped out. We were talking about like sustainable events. I'm like, I want to talk about girls. Yeah. And then- <laughs> <laughs> when are we talking about the titties? Yeah, I was like, all right, well, I clearly don't want to hang out with you guys, you fucking nerds. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> so I dropped out and then told mum, I'm going to try and make this DJ thing work. And then I like, thank fuck it did. Mm-hmm. And then um, that mixtape thing went viral, which I don't know if you know about, but that thing went viral. No. And then I, I did excuse to go to the US and then um, a guy I was hanging out with there, um, we were like working on a track together and then we were also both in the kind of like want to be online entrepreneur kind of space. And so he gave me this like course on like social media management and the trip home from LA to Perth was like 36 hours. And I was like, I had nothing to do. So I just binge watched this fucking course on the plane. I'm like, this is super interesting. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it was just a, I didn't formally study marketing, um, but I just did a bunch of courses that I like illegally downloaded. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Understandable. Yeah. Um, And then then just did it for a bunch of people. Of course. I think that's like the best way to do it these days is like just tackling it yourself, either yeah. like doing it on like YouTube or uh-huh. like, cause you, you find your own way to approach it as, yeah. as long as you get through doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean like, yeah, as long as you're interested enough. So like we were talking about like my fucking TikTok experiment earlier. Yeah. Let's go into that. <laughs> cause what the fuck, bro? <laughs> Where the fuck did that come from? Well, okay. So like, I had TikTok three years ago, um, and then I my first TikTok got to del- went viral, and then it got deleted for uh, breaking like four out of seven of the community guidelines <laughs> in the first like eight seconds. <laughs> Um, and then and then I didn't like it anymore. And then so I deleted it for like two years and I re-downloaded and I deleted it. Re-downloaded and I was like, this is just a black hole of time. And then like I was telling you, I'm like, I just want to hang out with the boomers on Facebook. I don't want to be part of this new fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like one of the things that I try to do personally anyway is like if you're uncomfortable with something, you should probably move towards it. It's like that's where growth happens and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, fuck it. Let's just try TikTok for like a solid seven days. Um, we're like 20 days in now and I've got like nearly a million views. What the fuck? Um, and it was literally all I wanted to do was like, let's just try it for seven consecutive days. That's an easy enough commitment. Um, I'm frankly, I told you I'm bored of it now and I don't care anymore. Yeah. Um, but it was just, I just want to know, like learn this thing. And then so what I did was like for a weekend, I just watched every fucking YouTube video that I could find, figured out how things worked. And then I just, and then on Sunday, I made a point of posting on my Instagram story that I was trying and I was going to try it for seven days or like people kind of hold me accountable at least. At least I would hold myself accountable. Um, And then the first day I got like 200,000 views. I think the second day, well, first day was like 170,000. Second day was one of the other days, like 200 and something. And I checked the analytics today and it's getting like close to a million. There's a two day delay in analytics updating, but it's like close to a million. What? So I went from like, I think I had like 36 or maybe 42 followers. I screenshot it and I, I won't bother finding it. I had like 42 followers when I like first started. And I think like I'm getting close to 1800 a day and it's been like two weeks and a bit. God damn, man. <laughs> so what, what was the strategy? Uh, so basically yeah, I watched all the YouTube videos and I figured like the main things were the hook, which is like the, the first thing that 
gets said to get them to stay to the end. Um, and then, and then it's just retention. It's just getting them to watch for as long as possible. There are some other variables that you can consider, like the engagement, which is really important as well. Um, so, for example, like my best one, that's, the one that's doing the best for me right now, is it's like a personality test thing. Um, and then the call to action at the end is so at the start there's like all this curiosity. It's like if you want to know this about someone, you should keep watching. And then it like explains it, and then there's a big reveal at the end, and then it says like comment what what yours was. And I still fucking get it. Like all these people commenting like their favorite movie was and shit like that. Um, and then the first one that blew up for me was like a YouTube thing, like a friend showed me. <laughs> My friends probably pissed because I like just got like all these views of the thing you showed me. It was like showed you like how to like it was a feature I didn't know about YouTube where you could get the transcript put into text and then you could scan through the. The, the transcript of the video to pull out key pieces of information and it, like the main kind of takeaway was like you could study more effectively on YouTube but it was like not many people knew about this feature and so everyone was sharing it with their friends and like what the fuck I don't know this about that um, so you took that feature and was like I could turn this into yeah, a fucking I, I, TikTok yeah, video like, the, like the first the first part of the video was like why didn't anyone tell me about this and so that at least gets a couple of people to go what the fuck well, I probably yeah. don't know this either and then just shows them how to do it and then at the end they're like oh what the fuck and then the retention rate was like on average like out of the 200 and something thousand people that watched 50% would watch, would watch oh sorry the average retention rate was like 50%. Um, I can't remember all the stats now, but it doesn't matter. But basically it's like, is get people to watch the video for as long as possible is the main goal of TikTok. So it, yeah, so it, the first step is to get them emotionally connected to whatever it is, whether it sparks their curiosity. Yeah, curiosity is probably a, a better way of putting it is like get them curious enough to watch through for the big reward that you're promising at the end. Right. Do and you it, keep it, like that Jordan Belfort type sales through that, like, you know, that straight line sale? Yeah, like, kind of like that. So like I'll, I'll record the TikTok and then I'll usually save it in drafts and then I'll watch it the next day and then essentially I call it like cutting the fat. I'm like, all right, that sentence doesn't need to be there. That sentence doesn't absolutely need to be there. So you have to consider like everyone's attention spans really short. So you need to keep the, every single thing. Right. And so it's just about getting them to stay for as long as possible and giving them enough reasons to stay for as long as possible. And people will complain about like, um, oh, the algorithm doesn't favor me or anything like that. The algorithm is people. Like if people don't watch your videos for long enough, it's because not enough people watched it for long enough. It's not the algorithm. It's the content you made wasn't good enough. Yes, okay. <laughs> that makes sense, <laughs> obviously. Um, yeah, and like, so, yeah, people, people do it in like any part. So that whole argument that the algorithm is... They're, they're, they're like, oh, dude, I've been shadow banned. Oh, well, yeah, like Instagram or something like that. I mean, yeah, you could you could argue that that is the platform, but for the most part, it's like it's if people, like people if, as long shit. as you're like following <laughs> the community guidelines and stuff like that, you're following all the rules. Like, if it, the the algorithm is made up of people, and it looks at what people watch this and how long do they watch it for. So at the end, the inputs are actually people. So. If your content doesn't bang, you kind of got to shine a little bit of light on yourself and go, how could I have made this a little bit better? Like I've posted, I don't know how many now, and some have 300,000 views and some have fucking 500. And the, I look at the ones that did 500 now, I can look at them and go, okay, I see I went wrong there. Like this wasn't that interesting. The hook was kind of weak. Those retention strategies weren't really there and stuff like that. And I can also look at the ones in the other end of the spectrum where they're like however many th hundreds of thousands of views and go, okay, yeah, I see what happened there. Like this was very curious. And then uh, everything like made sense. And there's a big reveal at the end. You probably wanted to tell someone about this at the end as well because it's really like, I didn't know this either. Right. And you can look at all those things, you know. Right. So... Like if you were to write a hook, right? So for like a, like for a TikTok. So mm -hmm. when you say hook, you're basically the first like few seconds of mm -hmm. like, what's interesting? What's the most interesting part of this video? Or is, is it more like a question? It could, be a, it could be a number of different things. So you could actually do the same TikTok and just fucking do it with five different hooks and just see which one does better. So for example, one of the best ones that's done well for me now is like, why didn't anyone tell me about this? I've done one that did well that was like, I closed 100% of sales one month with just one, this one sentence. Curiosity is the main kind of thing you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Cause, yeah, cause that, I heard the, um, it, the, the algorithm in a, like in other countries other than China it rewards um, dumb shit. Yeah, I'm curious about that one as well because I've had this conversation too. But I, I also think, okay, you, you could argue that yeah, like China, like it's in their best interest to do that well, kind of stuff. The CCP but, uh, kind of yeah. in that way inclined. Aren't yeah, they? You, you, could, you could definitely make that argument as well. But you could also argue 
that like when dumb shit comes up on my TikTok and like, I don't know, it's just fucking e-girls or something, I'm probably going to watch that thing all the way through to the end. <laughs> and so like at the end, we are dumb it's definitely fuck. back to what I said before, I'm like the user is the input. Yeah, okay. Sometimes the user is like dumb shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's true because mm. you're only getting that if, you, if you're looking at yourself, you don't have a lot of reference points. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> TikTok wants to keep you on the platform. So if you like, give, you give it a bunch of signals like, hey, I like e-girls. It's going to give you e-girls, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it wants you true. to stay in there and serve you ads. It's going to give you what you want, man. Yeah. <laughs> so does that out same algorithm, op- oh, my chair moved. Is that same algorithm apply for like Facebook? To a degree, the variables are different. Yeah. So it, it's looking to keep people on the platform. What, Facebook? Any social media platform. Oh, so okay. you, you had to consider like what, what does a company want? The company wants to make money from ad revenue. It makes more ad revenue from like impressions and things like that. Okay. And so it's in- And what's what, an impression, so? Oh, uh, just whenever so someone sees an ad. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, <clears throat> so it's in like any social media's platform to keep- users on the platform for as long as possible and it will serve people content that will achieve that goal. And so what it will do is it will look at individual users and go, cool, what's going to keep Brandon on TikTok? E-girls. YouTube is going to go, what's going to keep Brandon on YouTube? Fucking, what is it this week? I don't know. Now I'm obsessed. Like I want to learn programming. It's like, let's serve Brandon some programming content and let's, let's serve it based on the content we know is going to keep them there because of what other users have done with this content. Have How many other people clicked this content that we might serve to them? How many people watched this video all the way through to the end? Things like that. Right. So it's all about just keeping people on the platform for as long as possible. So for example, that's why like on Facebook, um, you probably know the trick, like don't put the link in your posts. Yeah. Yeah, because like Facebook's going to go, well, fuck, if someone clicks this, they're not going to be on Facebook anymore. And so that, that's why it reduces the reach of that because it's like, well, we want to keep people on Facebook. That's, what, that's why, for example, like, um, like lead form ads, oh, this is probably a relevant example, but I'm already saying it. But like so lead- what's, how do you get around that? Do you just upload the video straight to Facebook? Uh, this is like ways around it. You could do like clips and then I know people do like link in the comments and stuff like that. I'm, I'm guessing Facebook has cleared onto that now though. Um, yeah, okay. <clears throat> there's always like a little trick and things like that. Yeah, but at the end, right. you, you have to give the... Okay, here's a really good example actually. Um, I did this test, like I'm not trying to grow my Instagram at all, um, but reels are popping off now because Instagram wants to compete with TikTok, they're losing. Um, but... Re- like like reels just because re- like it wants to you know serve that kind of product if you post a reel the reach is like compared to anything it wants the attention straight up yeah um the reels reels get like more reach compared to any other kind of post of and stuff like that i downloaded one of my best performing tiktoks directly from tiktok and posted it to reels and it still had the watermark there the tiktok watermark bombed just didn't do well at all and then what i did was i got another good well performing tiktok i downloaded it off a web thing which removes the watermark and it is fucking banged now what that indicates is that facebook slash instagram knows how to spot a tiktok watermark and so if anything has the tiktok watermark it's going to kill the reach because it promotes another platform and i know that they can find the watermark because any facebook ads that you try to publish any facebook ads that you try to publish that have the tiktok watermark on them they won't get approved so Facebook has a system, it's, co- it's called, um, I think it's called graphical sentiment analysis is the correct term. Okay. They can look at a video and go, there's a TikTok watermark graphical there. Graphical sen- Graphical sentiment analysis. There's also analysis. lexical sentiment analysis. Which what's is, that? That's like, what, what, does, what does the text say? Oh, okay. Um, so graphical image videos. Yeah, so like when you like, on the iPhone 13, you like hold a photo and it'll show you like, it'll like read yeah, what's, yeah, what's yeah. on a person's yeah, yeah. t-shirt so or something. So the technology is there. So yeah, so if you upload something to Facebook or Instagram, it has the TikTok logo, they don't want to promote another platform. So they'll just kill the reach. Dude, yeah. that's some fucking info. Because <laughs> like you, you don't really think about that mm-hmm. when you're like... When you're just posting shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just did it as, because I, like, like I said, I'm not trying to get anything out of this. Like I'm not going to make money from TikTok. Like I said, I'm kind of frankly bored with it now. Um, but like I do all these different things. I'm like, what happens if I say this? And what happens if I do this? And I, go, I just look at the numbers and go, oh, well, that's interesting. Like how did that work? And stuff like that. Right. So are you going to continue with your TikTok? Oh, maybe. I don't really know. Like <laughs> I think the post I did today, which isn't doing well and I, didn't think it would either because it didn't really work on Facebook, which was doesn't matter. Um, but uh, yeah, I haven't really posted the last couple of days because I'm just like, 
don't really care. Like, yeah. like I don't really get anything out of it. Like I'll, if I have a clever idea and I think it will be helpful, useful, or entertaining for other people, I'll post it. But I'm not trying to like post every, like three or four or five times a day now. Like mm. it, just, it just takes up too much time. The actual operational drag involved in creating a TikTok, like a good one is actually really really time consuming when you consider it. So so what's how long is your standard TikTok now? Uh, it will vary, like usually around 30 seconds, I find it. And how long does it take you to create a 30 second I, I haven't actually timed it, which <laughs> I, I, I really want to do. I know it takes time. Yeah. Because like I, I film like a couple clips and then some of the clips will take me like fucking a dozen takes to get the right one. Yeah. Um, I really want to time myself because I haven't done that. I just kind of get on the flow and try to do it. But I'm sure like it could arguably, some of mine could have taken me like 15 or 20 minutes. For 30 seconds. Yeah. God damn. Because then you got to write the captions, you got to find a sound, you got to find a hashtag, you got to come up with the, all this other Is shit. Is all that important for like- That's important, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. every part of it. Yeah. Like so the sound you pick has to be like, like ideally trending right now. The hashtags is how TikTok will, uh, art, like, sorry, it's like sort and desert- discern who should be served what TikTok. Uh, the captions on the screen that pop up and disappear, that they're important for like cut, like client retention, uh, viewer retention, things like that. Right. Because people are at work with their phones turned down. Yep. That's, that's, that's a good way. But then also there's tricks you can do where the text says something different to what you're saying so that they might have to watch it twice because oh, they can't like listen to what you're saying I've but had also to go read at the same on. time and shit like that. And then you can make them disappear really quickly so they had to rewatch it and go, what the fuck did that say and stuff like that. See, so all this, that's like, they're all like really small things that really add up. Mm, mm. Yeah. <laughs> but it's annoying and time consuming to do. There's this book um, called Atomic Habits. Oh yeah, another one. And yeah. they, in the, I think it's... Or well, somewhere in the book, fucking, um, he talks about like little one percent. One percent improvements that exponentially grow over time. Yes. Compound over time. Compound over time. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a bicycle riding team in England, mm -hmm. and they were like, I think they lost fourteen years in a row or something like that. <laughs> and um, this one year, I think they took on I can't remember his name, so I'm not even going to try. But they took on a new coach, and it was a coach from an, an elite team, and they took on all his little one percents. Like they looked mm -hmm. at the tires, they looked at wind resistance, mm -hmm. they looked at like things that you wouldn't expect them to look at. Uh -huh. And but it I, just added up, and it all just added up. But I feel like when it comes to marketing. Mm -hmm. You kind of need to go at it your own way. Yeah. But there is a structure yep. that you need to follow and that structure is dynamically changing. Yeah. I mean, you can marketing is also a numbers game because you need to look at the analytics. Um, there's, there's a whole wide array of analytics you can look at. So for example, like I can tell you all the numbers for where you off the top of my head for last year. Every $5.36, someone give me their full name, their email and their mobile. Every $36, someone would ask to talk to me. And then after like the like acceptance rates and the show up rates, my closing rate cost me $536 to get a client that'll be worth like 25 grand in their lifetime. But I know all those numbers off the top of my head because I know the exact sequence that they go through. I know our click-through rate, like on average, like it's 1.96%. So that means every 100 people that see an ad, about two, two out of every 100 people that see it will yeah. click it. And then I know the landing page conversion rate means 33 out of every 100 people that hit that landing page will give me their contact details. I know the conversion rate of the next page is about 6%. So six out of every 100 people that visit that page will try and talk to me. I know the attendance rate is like, like all this stuff. And then so you can look at each kind of metric and go, how can this do just a little bit better? Like how can I make this landing page do a, like 1% better and things mm. like that. And then all of those, like I said, they just like compound and then, you know, cost me less and less money to get a customer. Right. Mm. That's awesome, man. That's <laughs> like a... It's also really boring to look at though. <laughs> oh, no, but dude, the fact that you had that fucking like, I guess, willingness to do it. Yeah. You know, mm. that fucking willingness from Willington <laughs> over here, you know. God damn, bro. You're willing. Mm. Um, Yeah, bro. So you've gone deep on this, eh? Yeah, like the, like the marketing thing and the TikTok thing. And I think I wanted to YouTube next. Dude. I like long form. Let's have a chat about this. Because like I I was thinking about doing adverts for this podcast. No, I don't think you should do adverts. I, I don't, think you should do TikToks and Reels. Yeah? 
Mm-hmm. Because that's that's how I see a lot of the small podcasts blowing up now, and it makes sense. So I actually, <laughs> I, <laughs> I guess I was sponsored for the Star Awards this year, right? Okay. And um, they asked me to like, because I just I was like, this sounds like fun. Fuck it. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> they asked me for a website to link, but I just sponsored it as Wilco. Wilco doesn't have a website. I'm like, can I? I was like, can it be anything? They're like, yeah. I'm like, bold move. Let's see if this pays off. Anyway, <laughs> I, I He's making a, a comeback. I, I was gonna do a prank website, and I was like, no, let's actually make this useful. I did a 20 minute like PowerPoint presentation on how to make a shitload of money on OnlyFans. And I made one chick like 140 grand. I just, oh, I, I actually just showed her if I twenty I'm gonna do this, and she told me ages later she made like 140k, and she needed like half this shit. Um, anyway, and like one of the, one of the slides anyway was how to get um, traffic. And so what I did was um, I explained like, look, the platforms that are going to get you the most reach, and the features that are going to get you the most reach on those platforms is Reels and TikTok. Yeah. Like you'll just get so many goddamn fucking impressions that you will just blow everyone out of the water, because they're the ones that you like, like let's say you post a photo dude, on instagram dude, can we pause and oh, go on a break i gotta empty that card oh easy, yeah, yeah yeah we are fucking back <laughs> <laughs> where do you want me to take off from um i think we were about to go into like instagram reels and tiktok for you growing podcast yes yeah yes. anyway so I was talking about that OnlyFans thing and I said, you guys, you got traffic from like content on Reels and TikTok and drive traffic to your profile there and that's where you have the fucking forbidden link, right? It's exactly the same strategy for you except you can keep your clothes on if you really wanted to. <laughs> um, so basically, like Reels and TikTok and just do really engaging clips and then just, just post like four or five of them a day and then enough people will binge watch those and if your retention rates are good enough, they'll go to your profile and that profile you can kind of consider a landing page. You want to get as many people that hit that profile to click the link to go to your YouTube. This, this is on YouTube, right? I watched one before. Um, or like, I don't know, if you do you host on Spotify at all or anything like that? I've, I've um, applied through Anchor to uh-huh. host video on Spotify so I'm just waiting to hear back from Anchor. Yeah, cool. Um, so for now, probably you would, you would link the YouTube, YouTube for like the yes. most recent episode probably. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, you just want to get as many people that visit your profile to click that link and you can consider that landing page. So the caption is really important. So for example, it could be something like, these these clips are good, the full episodes are better. Click below to watch the most recent episode. Things right. like that. Um, and then you get enough of those people doing it and then you, you know, your subscriber rates go up. You get And then it feeds into YouTube and then they'll start getting recommended your other videos and things like that. But it all starts with the top of funnel, which is getting as many views as possible. And it, it's easier to get as many views as possible on TikTok and Reels. Yeah, because like with the amount of content that I'm producing with podcasts, the TikToks and I mean the real content is just like abundant. Yeah. Especially when I'm talking like talking to interesting people. Yeah, and then yeah, the, you you won't be starved of content. Like you've got how many fucking lined up right now? Um, uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Lots. Like it, it'll be easy. And then and then one thing you can consider is just, just post like four or five a day. Mm-hmm. The quality doesn't matter too much at the start. Um, the quantity does because yes. as soon as one person watches one, like one full clip in like a row, TikTok's gonna go, oh shit, they watched that guy's video for a hundred percent. Let's look for other stuff on that person's profile because they're probably going to watch that for a long time as well. Mm. So, for example, the, so now the effects compound. So, like, um, I get consistently twenty thousand views a day because someone will watch a, like one of my really well performing ones and then get served another one. They get served another one and then get served another one because I got like I don't know twenty or something on my profile. Yeah, that TikTok okay. can just pick and choose from. And they just keep going. Yeah, yeah. And so the the, the more you post, like just. You, they may not, like you probably, well, I probably shouldn't say probably, you might not have ones that go viral, but you'll get a lot of different individual pieces of content that you get a couple thousand views each. So do you think it would be beneficial to have a separate clip page for the podcast to just post all my reels to and then have that link back to my actual podcast page? No, I think you can do the same thing because now you're going to try and grow two different profiles. Okay. Mm. Right, so just do the reels directly to my... I think all of your content on the Instagram will, will likely mostly all be reels. Yeah, I think yeah. you should do... You can do TikTok and then if you want it... Okay, so you're going to have an Instagram and a TikTok. Just focus on the TikTok. I'll, be, I'll just, just do that now. And then what you can do later is just download the TikToks without the watermark, remember that, mm-hmm. and then just post them to your Instagram and you don't even need to post them to the feed. 
like if if, if that's oh, all you're you worried re- about is yeah, like the profile, the- like the, there's like a billion reels there. Just like you don't need to post it. You can just un- you can just go, yeah, not share to newsfeed or yeah, profile whatever the fuck is, it is. Yeah. Um, and then your profile page when they visit visit it will just be photos of guests and shit like that. And then they can look at all the reels there. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's awesome. Thank you for that information. <laughs> that's okay. <I'm> <clears throat> I know that kind of seems like a, a ridiculous thing probably at your level to like, but that's, yeah, for, I'm just doing this shit myself. Yeah. So like, yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, if I was to like, if I was an, um, um, an artist, mm-hmm. right? Looking at a, uh, like a marketing standpoint, yep. like I'm talking a musician, right? Mm-hmm. Like a singer or something, like yep. a rapper. Do you think advertisement is the way to go? Or do, you, do you think advertisement through um, like booking is the way to go? Yeah, I don't think paid advertising is the way to go because I mean, you can and I have done it for artists in the past, but I've been very upfront with them. Like you are not going to make money back from this ad because the like, okay, so like we talked about just before we were recording this, like the revenue from a stream. Mm-hmm. So let's say for example, costs 11 cents to get someone to click to your Spotify and they play one of your songs. You're immediately fucking 11 cents minus the 0.0000005 cents for that play. Um, <clears throat> so there's no, the ROI isn't there. You could argue that like, if you want to go down the route of like brand awareness and stuff like that, you could do that, but you can also do that for free means like <laughs> again, reels and TikTok and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, so when it comes to artists, I always argue that you should work out an organic strategy first. The other reason for that as well, if, if, if you immediately go to paid, um, it's like putting, what's the best way of doing it? If something does well organically, you don't need to pay for it. Like you can go viral and stuff like that. Yeah. But if, you, if you're just trying to like go immediately to paid, it's kind of like saying like, I don't have content that's like engaging enough for this to reach enough people. So, and it's kind of like trying to polish a turd to be frank. Yeah, okay. uh, it's, it's just like, <laughs> it's like I, had to, I had to fucking pay to show this to more people. Yeah, okay. um, that makes sense. Yeah, mm. it, it like, why are you paying for shit, bro? Yeah, isn't, that, isn't it entertaining? I actually had a good chat with uh, like Mashton, Matt from Mashton Kutcher, uh, like this was years ago when I was still at university, and he explained he used to work with the guys for because you know Mashton Kutcher, like they went viral on Facebook yeah. all the fucking time, right? They did some work with like Lad Bible and stuff like that, and they told me that as soon as a Facebook page spends any amount of money on advertising, it's a signal to the algorithm that. These guys don't make enough, or at least these guys think their content isn't engaging enough for it to do well organically, so they've had to give us money, so their next post probably isn't any good either. Damn. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Right, so it... Yeah, because it's, it's of a, programmed by humans. It's a spinning black hole, yeah. You know? It's programmed by, by humans, right? Yeah, so, yeah, and exactly. like, we're always trying to find the cunning way around it, and I guess mm-hmm. that is a, a way, is like, if you have money... Yeah, and look, look at every... What you want to consider is look at every single thing that Facebook, or okay, like, let's not use Facebook as an example. Let's any every single action that a social media platform can track on you, how long you watch something for, what hashtag was on, when you swipe, and things like that. Look at every single data point that it could collect on you, and like figure out is this good or bad? Like, does this indicate that this piece of content and this creator is good or bad at creating content? And spending money on an ad to boost something is an indication that the content isn't very good because they weren't confident in it enough to, for it to do well organically. And so they're going, all right, well, fuck, not, like this isn't good. Not many people are going to say it. Let's just throw 50 bucks at it. And then it goes, all right, well, your last post you posted, this one probably isn't going to be any good either. And then it becomes a little bit of a, like a black hole. I guess it's like you, gotta, you spend money to reach more people and then the next one doesn't do as well. You got to spend more money to reach more people and it's just a fucking dead end. Right, okay. Mm. So for the people that um, are just trying to grow organically, mm-hmm. TikToks are the best thing for your organic funnel to start the funnel. Yeah. The next thing for the funnel would be something like a little bit longer viewing time, right? Like yep. yeah, so something like just, three minutes or something. Yeah, just like constantly making, I mean... Then it just becomes about making better and better content, really, and looking at what worked well and going, why did that one do so well? And let's let's make more of that stuff. So, for example, like my experiment, like 
I've, there's absolutely no consistency to my profile. Every single thing is just its own fucking test. I'm yeah, like, what yeah. fucking happens if I make distro? Like there's a fucking joke about like a KFC flashlight in there <laughs> right right next to a TikTok about how to study more effectively on YouTube. There is no consistency. What it's fucking fuck? wild, bro. Like I imagine the people that followed me for like tips on how to study better and it's like a, go- a joke about like fucking a KFC flashlight or something like that. <laughs> like it's just anarchy. Like everything, every, everything for me is just like, what happens if I post this? And then looking at the numbers and going, Oh, okay, I see why that happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you want to look at your winners and go, why did this one do particularly better than all the other ones? Yeah. yeah. And then you look at the ones that are losing, go, all right, let's not fucking make that mistake again. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So um how what what so just low views distinguish a bad TikTok? Yeah, I mean like low views, I mean like Or if well, you just get mad hate. It's just, no, nah, like comment, mad hate comments is good. good. Mad hate is good. Mm. It's like sometimes there's a trick where you spell something a little bit wrong and then everyone comments and goes, oh, corrects oh, you. Right. Um, so there's stuff like that. But really it's like, what does TikTok want? TikTok or any social media Oh, by platform. the way, by the way, if you see any spelling mistakes on anything that I put up, <laughs> that ain't on purpose. I'm just a dumb <laughs> fuck. <laughs> um, but yeah, you want to look like, all right, social media platforms want to keep people on the platforms for as long as possible so they can serve as many ads as possible and get their ad revenue up because that's how they make money. Okay. Um, and so you want to, yeah, just keep people on the platform for as long as possible. Um, what was the question that you just asked? Uh, TikToks. Fuck. <laughs> This is fucking podcast for you, dude. I'm so, I, I forget them all I the time. I think we were, we were saying that, um, yeah, you want to keep users on the platform for as long as possible. So it'd be like, um, yeah, so TikTok, I would use TikTok for the podcast. Well, I am using it currently. If you want to check it out, it's, I think it's Jacob Rhodes. I think so. You should probably know that. <laughs> I think it might be Jacob D. Rhodes. I've got to get rid of that. But that's how I got like my... Producer name Doctor, wow. so Dr. Um, yeah, so I, I can't. Do you think I should change my actual Instagram to just Roadshow? Yeah, I mean, you want some consistency with anything. This this is one thing that I've like also kind of struggled with right now because I like I have Wilco and I've like Brandon Willington and I've Wei Yu and they're all completely different fucking things. The Wilco thing is typically associated with being a DJ that like parties a lot. The Brandon Willington thing is like the business fucking sell out yeah. where you was like the company. So it's not like, it's not you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like even though I'm in all the ads, you could argue that it's a personal brand. Yeah. Um, there's no like consistency. Cause I frankly, like I don't care, um, but I should consider that because like there's business stuff on my TikTok and then there's like funny shit on my TikTok. Like there should be some separation between things. Um, but I should also note that I'm not a branding person. So but I think there should be some like you had to th- like think with the end in mind, right? Um, you always want to have like things completely separate so that they can be on their own thing, and you can't accidentally misattribute why something did well. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah, like if you want this podcast to be a really really big thing, it should have its own social media profiles. Yes, mm. I agree. Okay, okay, mm-hmm. food for thought. Yeah, because I do have it operating as my my old personal page that I converted, mm-hmm. and it just had it just made sense because I don't really use Instagram for like I used to be ego like when I was a bodybuilder and stuff I was like yeah let's do this shit mm-hmm. and I just wanted to post everything about myself but I like talking to people dude mm. that's what I do you know yeah. so now that I've turned it into a podcast it's like yeah might as well just change it over to yeah, that separate it yeah. Mm. So um, you were saying like you you are the brand though. Like, yeah, that's actually a problem in, in and of itself. Do you think? Yeah. Um, Cause that no, wild, not right now. That not wild right now. nature of yours, bro. I love that shit. Yeah, it's not a problem right now. So let's say, for example, I was just talking about like thinking with the end in mind, right? Mm-hmm. So I've never had to like sell a business before or like exit a business before because I've never like built a business that big. But there is a point at some point in the future, whether it's five years, whether it's 10 years, whatever it is, there is a point at some point in time where I'm going to have to say, I don't want to do where you anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't see it anytime soon, but that's a thing that's going to have to happen. There's two ways that can happen. I can either sell it or, or I can just close it. If it's just me, no one will buy it. There is a third option for that. You know so. that. Uh, employ someone under you that you have yeah, grown. Yeah, in the CEO role and stuff like that. That's still a problem though because the ads are very reliant on me. 
Not if there's an incorporation over time with that other person in mind. Yeah, so like you're going to have a, a step transition. Over. You see, but it's, it's still the same problem. They're like right it's, now it's, immediately. It's easy with an intern if you have that exit yeah. in mind. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's difficult to do though. Yes, um, of course. But yeah, like me being like a, you'd still argue it's the fucking brand in our, because oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, in, yeah. I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in all the ads and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and you know, any big agency, like they can't be personality driven because, you know, if someone wanted to buy it or, you know, whatever, um, they you can't buy it, me yourself. and the ad and yeah. stuff like that. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Like they won't want to buy it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that is a little bit of a problem for the future, but not for now. Right now it's fucking weird. But like, <laughs> well, can, you could step away, operate well, fundamentally from the adverts once mm. you have your client base, and then set up a new way to advertise. Yeah, exactly. So then they'll be looking at like an outbound strategy or just ads that don't have me fucking swearing in them all the time. But they probably won't <laughs> perform as well, though. Yeah, no, I don't think they <laughs> like, will. But yeah, that's that's a problem for like two years time. It's yeah, like okay. right now, it's like we're just a small team, like. Fuck it, if it works, let's fucking get more clients doing it. Well, like, yeah. what? It's not going to work forever. So 100%. like, just keep doing it. But yeah. Well, yeah, you're doing fucking well with it. Anyway, <laughs> um, what were we fucking talking about before that? Can't remember. We had a question. I had a question. Dude, there's, these questions go over my fucking head, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> they always do. What's your um, workout routine? Because you've lost a bunch of weight since I saw you last. Oh, thanks. I'm starving. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, I have a personal trainer, Harris, who's sadly moving to Melbourne like uh, on like Saturday morning, so I'll just be training by myself. But I was do I do strength training with him uh, five days a week, so just like weekdays, and then Bon at Kickass MMA, I do boxing with, and just get fucking bashed uh, <laughs> um but yeah I, I just do like a walk every morning for like 20 or 30 minutes and then um i do strength training until like nine and then i do boxing two other days of the week yeah okay um but it was mostly the diet that lost most of the weight like i was already doing a relatively high volume of exercise but like you know you eat more than you fucking burn and you'll you know, you won't lose weight. Of course, of course. Did you follow any kind of like strict diet to begin with? No, it was just it was just fucking calories in, calories out. Like I didn't yeah, stick okay. to like a keto or fucking anything like that. It was just like it's just eat less than you fucking yeah. Like the feature, like the actual when I started like peeling weight off was like no one told me. I had a TikTok about this. I don't know why I didn't do better than it did. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, you probably know the My Fitness Pal app, right? Yes, did, love it. Did you know that there's a feature right next to the search bar that if you press it and then you can scan barcode? Yeah, of course. I didn't fucking know about that for like two <laughs> years, bro. And then someone showed me. I'm like, what? Yeah, dude. And then, oh, dude, literally. Like, Open soon, your world up. Because I was always trying to like search and like I'm eating chicken and then obviously misentering things. Yeah, of course. And then as soon as I could go, just get like a like a meal and just scan the fucking barcode, all I, it's just a numbers game there. This is yeah, like, keep the dude. number under this. I'm like, what the fuck? Dude, <laughs> I, I had my, like, this is how fucked up I was. Um, I had myself taking shots of olive oil because <laughs> I oh, didn't really? get my fats in for the day. <laughs> well, back when I was a, when, I, when I was bodybuilding, I would just eat rice and chicken. Yeah, and that's then I, yeah. yeah, but then I was like, I'll um, I'll add in like avocado, and I thought uh -huh. that that would give me heaps of fat. But there's uh -huh. not a lot of like fat in avocado. Yeah. So um, this one night, I, <laughs> I was like, I had I think it was like forty grams of fat that I needed to take in. <laughs> Yeah, it was a ridiculous amount. And I had like a tablespoon of peanut butter and I was like, that's not enough. So I poured like like a 20 mil, mil shot of olive oil. <laughs> it was nice olive oil. It wasn't like shitty olive oil. Yeah. But then I, yeah, I yanked just that back. Just a shot of that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was just eating like chicken breast and rice. And then I had like pretty uniform meal, so it was very easy to track. Yeah. I wasn't fucking in the oil and the this and the that. It was like really, really easy to track because, you know, you just want to make it as easy as fucking possible. Of course, dude. Mm -hmm. That's, um, I haven't like strict, been strict with my diet for, for like four weeks. Mm -hmm. I kind of was just like, I, I, I've kind of been keeping to fruit and meat. Uh-huh. Yeah, but you, you've been tracking long enough that you can like fucking eye weigh 150 grams of chicken and no ballpark where you're at. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, w when you're like really aggressively trying to cut, you want to track for as long as possible. Like right now I'm not tracking, but I'm still actually losing weight because I can just fucking, I tracked for so long that I can look at a piece of chicken and know how many calories. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah. Are you finding like um, that the boxing and shit's helping? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's a culmination of like everything really. 
Oh, oh. <laughs> hang on, just one blink. Um, the the boxing is more for like um, uh, like it's just like I'm uncomfortable with it, so I just want to get a little bit better at it. Like I'm not a violent person at all, but I'm like I just want to know how to box. Yeah, and you know, it's so fun. Yeah. You, di- you didn't do any combat sports as a kid? No, I, did, I never did any combat sports. So I was like, oh, this is hard. Let's try this. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so I suck at it, <laughs> dude. Yeah, like that. So have you um, been punched in the face yet? Oh yeah, fuck yeah. The dude I train with just. It's impossible to fucking hit Bond. <laughs> just like that spot. Dude, I can't not laugh during sparring. Oh, I'm like, yeah. dude, this is fucking comical. I'm it's- like, everyone's watching, bro. <laughs> 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 He's just doing stupid moves on yeah. me. I'm like, man, I can't Ducking hit you. everything. I'm like, I can't hit you if you can't like keep fucking moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just stay still. Yeah, just dude. stay still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that... Um- that's always fun when you're first starting out in training. Yep. And uh, like you learn to punch yet. Yeah, and then and then you get that first like cortisol spike when you see someone going, oh, you're going to fucking hit me? And mm. it's not just pads anymore. Mm. But yeah, that's that's fun. I like it. Like I like not being good at things. So I'm like, all right. It's, it's useful for the ego too because like – it's very easy to go, I'm fuck. If you only do things that you're good at, it's too easy to go, I'm fucking incredible. But every now and then you had to like do something where you get punched in the face and go, right, I'm not too fucking shit hot <laughs> Literally. now. Literally. <am> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one thing that'll do it. Oh, yeah. A fucking literal punch, punched in the face. Yeah, like, just get fucking pegged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, yeah, I remember when I first started Muay Thai, that was... That was some scary shit. Mm-hmm. Cause you you first I first walked into the gym and I saw a heavyweight Russian dude <laughs> kick yeah, and he was a WMC champion uh-huh. and he kicked the bag so fucking hard. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit. Yeah. And like I I sparred with him the first time. <laughs> and I was like, and he went so lightly on me and yeah. he, I got my bell rung yeah. bro and it was not good <laughs> um good. but it was kind of like that that first cortisol spike that you're saying yeah i had that really 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 early and mm-hmm. it was really really scary mm. and like after that kind of everyone was just like it, everything after that was just technique and drilling mm-hmm. you know and then like every time i sparred comparably yeah. Fuck, there was nothing. Yeah, it's it's just something that you're initially uncomfortable with and then you kind of go, ah, oh, it's not that fucking bad. And it's the same with everything. Yeah. It's the same with music, podcasting, yep. and, and I guess it's the same with marketing too. Yeah, it's the same with like any skill set. So like, oh yeah, like the fucking, I fucking hated TikTok. I'm like, all right, you're uncomfortable with this. You should probably move towards it until you're un- like, you are comfortable with it. It's not that fucking bad. And then just did it. And now I'm like, oh, it's not that fucking bad. And I also don't care anymore. Um, but like the next thing will be like YouTube. Like I've never fucking started a YouTube channel. I'm interested. Let's fucking give that a shot. I want to learn programming now for some fucking reason. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> I'm like, all right. No. Oh, I have some experience programming in like high school. But like um, I'm like, all right. Dude. Let's fucking try it. But <laughs> You've got so many things that you're doing. <laughs> so many things. I get bored really easily. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I think like you've got that type of like... Uh, ADHD is that what you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I've, I've got a little bit of that in me too. Yeah. Have you owned cats? Uh, I haven't owned cats. No, I had dogs as a kid. Yeah? I want to get a cat though because um, my friend has a cat, black cat called Pingers. Pingers? My, my other friend has a... Also, a black cat called uh, Kickons. Kickons. And I want to get one and call it Catamine. Catamine. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? Oh no! And then you get to ha- get them to hang out, and you call it a bender. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. Fuck. Get him a little bowl of catnip. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it's spaced out cat. Dude. <laughs> whose whose idea was this? Oh, that was mine. I mean like I had two friends that had like drug related cat names. Like, it's fucking trifecta. <laughs> oh no, that's great. I have a um I have a ragdoll. 
Is that the one that was outside? No, no, not that one. Okay. This one's at uh, another location. Um, that fucking cat. We've done a couple of podcasts. If you listen really closely, you can hear the fucking cats outside yeah. fighting. Oh, real? Yeah. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> and like, I walk outside sometimes. Like you said before, something's comical. These motherfuckers like do like cartwheels. Oh yeah, around like, the like, place. And shit. Yeah, yeah, like trying to get at each other. <laughs> it's like goddamn. And then like the lady that owns the actual cat like comes out and like Fucking grabs them. Yeah, it's like yeah, oh, man. Like get your <laughs> cat under wraps. <laughs> um, we might uh close this up anyway, bro. Yeah. Um, it's getting late. I think we cover a lot of useful things. Yeah, and I think that camera keeps turning off. Yeah, is it's, it's right. either full or. Stressed. Stressed like me. <laughs> <laughs> Not stressed at all. Anyway, brother, thank you so thank much. You um, where can everyone uh, find your stuff? Uh, well, it depends what you want. Like, <laughs> so it's but, wherenumarketing.com? Or yeah, where so like wherenumarketing.com.au is like the advertising thing if you're a business owner and you want to grow online. If you just want to see shit that I post, my TikTok and my Instagram, it is Wilco only child. So like Wilco and then only child. But like with a dot, you'll we'll, find it if okay. you search for it. Okay. But <laughs> we'll only child. Yeah. And then, um, but yeah. There you go. Awesome, bro. Well, thank you so much thank for coming in, dude. It was a valuable use of everyone's time. Yeah, dude. That, you dropped bombs, man. <laughs> you seriously did. Like uh, this one, I'm going to go over Take many, many times. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you're a legend. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much. Cheers, dude. Bye, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>